Hi and welcome back. Let's take a closer look at the game Albuera from the Wargamer issue number 8. Let's go ahead and play one complete game turn of Albuera from the Wargamer num issue number 8. Give you an idea of how the game plays. We are going to begin with game turn 5. It is the 2 o'clock p.m. turn. And the first thing that we will do is conduct the French bombardment phase. The French player, having taken a look at the map and considering his options, will use... Good nose artillery here. I think he should be stacked with him. And let's see. I think that's probably the only unit that the French have that is capable of firing a shot with any decent probability of a hit. The good no, forgive my French pronunciations. Um, artillery unit will attack the King's German Legion here in one of the hexes of Albuera. Each artillery unit has a defense uh, value, a bombardment value, and a movement uh, factor. These units also have an initiative number up here in the upper right hand corner, but for this game they are not used. They are used in the Vittoria game. How you factor a bombardment attack is you take, indicate the unit that's going to bombard, indicate the target. Um, I believe they attack just the target and not the target hex. Um, I can't find any where that it states that you attack a hex instead of a unit. Um, I could be wrong, but that's how I'm playing it. You indicate the target, determine if it's in um, up on a higher level or if it is in rough terrain. I don't know if you can see any rough terrain on this particular shot. Um, no, I don't think so. And you will count the distance to the target. In this case, it's one, two hexes. So you're going to subtract from the bombardment value two. Artillery has a maximum range of five, unless it is up on a crest line or on a hill, um, upslope basically. And then it has a range of six. But at the moment, it only has a range of five. And you will take, like I said, the range to the target minus the bombardment factor. So in this case we have a 10 minus 2. We're going to have an 8 factor bombardment value. I apologize for the glare. You will take the 8 bombardment strength and in this case and in all cases with artillery you must divide the bombardment strength into groups of four or let me see make one attack for each four combat factors or part thereof so in this case our calculation should be fairly easy we have a bombardment strength of eight and we're going to divide it up into two groups of four so on this table I'll be making two die rolls on the four column. Um, as you can see, I need a four, five, or six to score one morale point. Uh, one morale point hit against the British uh, King's German Legion. So we're going to roll the die on the first of the four strength points. I roll the two, which indicates uh, zero, nothing, no effect. I will once again roll the die for the second group of four. 
I also roll a 2 on that one. And therefore, the bombardment of the Gugno unit versus the King's German Legion unit is ineffective. I've also looked at the rest of the map board and I do not see um, any other opportunities for the French to engage in bombardment. They're either too far away or there are friendly units <clears throat> blocking their line of sight, uh, that type of thing. Okay, the next phase is going to be the French initiative phase. In this phase, we will roll a die based upon the initiative factors of the various commands to determine the amount of movement they will have this uh, game turn. In Albuera, each player has a different number of commands. There are three armies represented by the counters. The Allied player moves the British, including the Portuguese and Spanish, and the other player moves the French. Each army is divided into different commands. The French army has seven commands, the artillery, the cavalry, and five uh, infantry commands. Gazan, Whirl, or Whirl, whatever, W-E-R-L-E, Goudinot, Girard, and the reserve. And each command has an initiative factor common to all units in it. Four for the artillery, the cavalry, and the reserve, and three for the others, uh, including infantry. Let's see. So, what we're going to do in the initiative phase is before movement, each nationality rolls the die once and compares the result with the initiative factor of each of his commands to determine the actual movement factor for that command that turn on the initiative chart. Um, so it looks and sounds to me, and the way I've been playing it is, um, you'll roll one die for each command and that's going to be its uh, based on the initiative chart that's going to tell you how many uh, how much of your movement you can use this turn. Down here on this track are command counters um, and they'll move along this track which really indicates their morale and their how many losses they, not really so much losses but how many morale hits they've taken. The number at the top is the actual morale of the unit currently. With each hit they take, either in combat or bombardment, that number will drop by one or more points. But anyway, the counters shown here indicate the various commands, and we will use the initiative table to determine each command's uh, potential movement allowance. Of course, the counters each uh, have a variable number of units in that command, like good no, the reserve, that type of thing. When we roll for the initiative, we'll determine how uh, many factors they can spend this turn. All right, I'm going to roll the die once, and we're going to pick good no's formation for or command first. I have him on his track down here just off camera. Um, anyway, you can see the initiative track. And like I said, the only columns that matter at the moment are the three column and the four column. So we roll one die. It is a two. So we re um, <clears throat> read down on the three and four columns to the two row. We come across. All infantry units will have half their normal movement um, factor, and all cavalry, artillery, etc. will have half their normal movement factor. I haven't found a good way to mark the units so that you can tell which units have been rolled for and what their die roll was, and thus what their actual movement um, 
allowance or factor will be. So I'm going to place on good no here a two indicating that it was a uh, die roll of two so that all the units under his command will I will know that it was a die roll of two and just looking at the three and the four columns will tell me that a die roll of two was half normal I'll go ahead and do that for the rest of the French units and then I will return with phase number three the French movement phase now that we know what the die rolls are for the various French commands and therefore the actual movement um, factors that I'll be able to spend this turn, we're going to move on up to the French movement phase. For the moment we're going to focus on Goudenot. I'm not quite sure how you spell that or pronounce that of course, but uh, that's what it looks like to me. Goudenot, Goudenot, I do not speak French or very many other languages fluently. So we're going to focus on Lutonot's formation command, which is in this area right here, for movement. Every unit exerts a ZOC around it, and once you enter an enemy ZOC, you must stop, and combat is mandatory. You may leave a zone of control, um, at a penalty of three movement points. It'll cost you three movement points to uh, leave a zone of control. And of course you cannot move zone of control to zone of control. And if you do leave an enemy zone of control you will lose one morale factor. So we know that we have full or do we have half? Let me look real quick. We have Uh, half and half uh, for both uh, infantry and others. Um, the French don't really have any good odds around Albuera, Albuera whatever, uh, for attacking. And I don't think the river, the stream costs five movement points to cross. And all there is is a penalty. So yes, there is a sort of control across it. Yes, uh, that indicates you would have to attack the units across it. However, at a severe penalty. So I don't want to just, you know, even if I had the movement factors, I'm not going to just rush, uh, rush over there. But I wonder uh, five movement points. Um, and artillery costs four movement points with movement factors to bombard, so he only has four left. Divided by two will be basically two. So he's not going anywhere unless he stays along the road, and artillery cannot voluntarily enter an enemy zone of control, even if it is stacked with or moving with the infantry unit. So good knots command. It doesn't look like it has a whole lot that it can or will do. If I move this unit to here, he has to stop and attack, and he'll be attacking an infantry and an artillery unit. And the artillery unit will get to use its four um, defense factors. And that's not really what we want to do right now. So I think they're just going to hold their position. The only other option I would really have with them would be to take them around take this command around here and attempt an outflank but that would create a pretty uh, pretty large gap there and since I'm trying to um, outflank the Spanish position here I don't want to take any more forces from here uh, to use as a you know, as a holding force, so to speak. So I think we will just go ahead, leave his command where it is, and focus on another command. I think the next command that I will activate will be Gerard's. He rolled a three on his initiative, and that means half for infantry and normal for 
cavalry artillery. His command is over here. Um, well, there's Gazan. Gerard is over here, basically, on the far left French flank there. This is Soult. And he is with somebody. Who is he with? Can't be by himself. He's with a unit from Gazan's command. I think he was there close enough for demonstration purposes. So we are going to go ahead and move units from Gerard's uh, command. And like I say, we have half for infantry. So that's basically five. One, two, three, four. Uh, let's see, if I move into this hex, I'll have to attack both of these units. If I move into this hex, I'll have to attack both of those units. I'm going to go ahead and try to bring up... I think I'll just leave that unit there, actually. And we'll bring up some more of Gerard's forces to attack Zaius. Uh, the Zaius infantry unit there. So, one, two, one, two... The rest of that is Gazan's uh, command over here. Uh, we'll go ahead and bring up from infantry to fire, so it has four movement points to enter rough. This here is rough. I hope you can see all that. Uh, rough is going to be three hexes to enter. Uh, three. It's going to cost three movement points to enter rough. Um, Let's go ahead and take this light cavalry down a slope, which costs nothing. Cavalry has a 15 uh, movement factor, and it's not halved. So we're just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, I think, for right now. Just going to cover that flank. I think we'll do the same with the heavy. Um, it has its full movement point allowance. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's a down slope or down, yeah, down slope at the moment. So these guys here will cover the flank pretty good. The artillery unit has eight movement points. I'd like to get it up uh, a little closer to the action next turn. So one, two, uh, let's see, it has its full movement points. Three, four, five, six, seven see what that does, if anything. Okay, that's it for Gerard's command. Okay, the next command that I'm going to activate is going to be Kazan. I rolled a 6 for him, which means that all of the units in his formation have a normal movement allowance. And as I kind of indicated last time, Gazan's formation is basically those four or five units right there. Uh, and the French commander Soult is uh, in, one, in the same hex as one of the units, um, which at this time really bears no relevance. Commanders do have a benefit an initiative in that you can choose to use their initiative instead of the die roll with the unit they are stacked with and that can affect the morale of units when they try to regroup but right at the moment they don't really have much other um, use uh, let's see so we have like I said normal movement <clears throat> Guy's kind of weak, but I guess we're going to have to do a soak off attack of some sort. So that might be this poor unit down here beneath Sol, Solt, whatever. We're going to move this Gazan unit up here for what is it? 
one movement point, and we're going to move Soul into there. All leaders must be stacked with a unit at all times. Uh, stacking, by the way, is <clears throat> only one artillery unit per hex. You can have uh, one infantry and one artillery. You can have two infantry if the total stacking point or combat factors are less than eight. So most of these units are eight or more or six or more. Anyway, um, cavalry cannot stack with other units. I'm not even sure if it can stack with cavalry. Because cavalry may only stack with leaders. Well, there you have it. Okay, so are we still in the uh, picture here pretty good? Yes. Okay. We are going to move there. So this unit, who has all of its movement factors, is going to try and get up to here to help soak off against that unit. So one, two, I can't go that way. One, two, three, four, and then five. He could have moved ten movement points, but he just moved uh, five. I'm going to bring the artillery up since it did not fire. Can't enter the zone of control. But I guess we'll put it right there. Now the eight point is on a unit right here. I'm not so sure. I would like it to have moved, been able to move over there by the Zayas. Uh, Spanish unit, um, but then it would have to attack both those on it, it'd have to attack this unit on its own. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and move it up, you know, out of the rough up to here, I guess. And we'll see what happens next turn. Okay, I have one correction I want to make. Um, I'm going to take a move back or um, whatever. I am going to move this Gazan unit up to here. One more movement factor. Um, because this guy is going to be a soak off against him, but I can now activate Whirl, which has also rolled a six and has all normal movement. Um, so I can move. Uh, let's move this guy. Uh, up the slope, I should know this by now, is plus three, so one, two, three, four for the clear, and then five over to here. We're going to get the artillery up to here. And let's see, what else, what other trouble can I get into? I think we're going to get ready to set up an attack probably over in this area here. Um, I don't remember, I don't know if I moved this light, or light cavalry or not. Let's get over here a little bit better. Like I said, I'm not sure. I don't think I moved it because I don't think I would have left it there if I did, but eh, whatever. I'll move in one hex. So, I have two more units. I'm going to move this other whirl, whirl unit there. And I think I'll move this unit there. And then the cavalry, which I, I'll put there. That'll be better. That way... Actually, I'm just going to leave him there. Anybody that wants to come up and attack him will um, have to attack all of those guys. Alright, now the last unit I have is the reserve, and they rolled a 2. A 2, as we all know, uh, let's see, is half and half. The reserve unit, <clears throat> there's only one of them. Uh, let's see here. Is right here. 
It's a seven strength unit. It has five movement points at the moment since uh, that's uh, what I rolled on the initiative table. Table. <coughs> um, I think quite sure. I don't know enough about this battle to uh, have an idea of what Salt did with the reserve. But I think I will bring him up one, two, and that's as far as he can go. Can't cross Riverside with five, uh, or the river with five movement factors. So that ends the French movement phase. Okay, next up we're going to have the French melee phase. Okay, let's move along to the French melee phase. Looks like we're going to have several. Um, all units, all French units, which have an enemy unit in their zone of control, must engage in uh, combat with uh, one or more units. So, against this Zayas unit, I think I'm going to put Gerard, this Gerard, whatever unit's under assault here, I've already forgot. There's probably another Gerard unit. Uh, another Gerard unit. Uh, let's see, that's so far, that's, uh, what, 24? Um, I'm going to put, let me see, I'm going to have this Gazan unit attack this Zayas unit in the uh, rough, so that's basically going to be my soak off attack, and then we're going to have Gazan and Whorl attack uh, this Belis Ballesteros unit. It's not going to be great attack, I'm really hoping that this one is the the one that's most successful, but anyway, we'll see. Okay, in order to resolve melee, you will, against infantry, infantry versus infantry will use their combat factor, and they will also use their current morale factor <clears throat> um, with that particular command. If there's two commands, I think you use the lesser of the two morale factors. I think that's how that works. I'll have to double check, but I remember reading that somewhere. Okay, so, get my handy dandy calculator out here because math is not a strong point of mine. Okay, we got 8 times 3 is um, 24. We'll add 1 for the leader, Salt, and that's going to make it 25. Well, here I am already messing up. Well, that would be the base odds <clears throat> if I would uh, remember to include the, um, the morale factors. So basically I have an 8, an 8, an 8, and a plus 1. To that I have to add the um, morale factors for that particular command, which I just described. So grand, 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 whatever. Uh, let me see what's under assault. Was that grand or was that... Gazan. Okay. So we'll see about Gazan. Gazan has the highest. I have four. I don't think it's going to matter. And the other one has a six because he hasn't fired yet. That command hasn't been used. So we'll add six to two of them. And then we'll add four. Well, we'll add six to one of them. And four to the other two. Lord, I hope that's right. Okay. All right, let me check here. I come up at 39. Anybody else out there have uh, better math skills than me? Um, are free to double check me. And that's going to be versus Zayas here, this Zayas unit. Zayas, Zayas. He's in clear, so his number is going to be 7 plus his morale. Now the Spanish have taken 
several morale hits, so they're down to a two. So he's a nine. And like I said, the leader adds one combat strength point. So we got what? 39 divided by nine. We're looking at four to one. So once you get that done, we'll go to the melee combat results table and we'll roll one die on the four to one column. Roll the four. Uh, four to one, yes. Roll the four. I guess that's the highest table you can have. So our results are looks like a zero and an R4. First, uh, in, um, first, first result is for the attacker. The second result is for the defender. And we have a zero R4. Let's double check what that means. <clears throat> what do we have? On the combat results table, the attacker's result is shown before the oblique stroke, and the defender's result is after it. Uh, let's see. R means a mandatory retreat, so the Spanish unit will have to go back for hexes, and that, or no, it's going to have to go back, it's going to have to retreat. The four will be uh, morale hits. And let's see. The others will be morale hits, and there's nothing on the defend. Uh, nothing uh, affects the attacker. Sorry. So the Spanish will come over here first and apply the apply the morale hits. If I can go. Let's go ahead and go over here a little bit. All right, Spanish morale point. Uh, Spanish morale is going to drop by four. One, two, three, four. It doesn't really hurt anything at the moment because their actual morale um, factor remains a two. However, for the Spanish unit, which was forced to retreat. He is going to be eliminated because he has no safe path of retreat. He can't retreat here, he can't retreat here because of stacking limitations. Zones of control, zones of control, zones of control. So he is going to be eliminated. When a unit is eliminated because it cannot retreat, let me double check here. If a mandatory retreat is impossible, because of overstacking or entry into an enemy zone of control, then ignore the retreat order, but deduct one morale point for each combat factor on the unit, or eliminate it if the unit is a cavalry or artillery. So, um, in this respect, we're going to we're going to reduce uh, we're going to reduce Spanish morale even farther further by seven points. Okay, their morale is now a one. So they will only get to add a one in any particular combat between infantry and infantry. So um, if they continue to drop, they'll get down into the um, route category, uh, demoralized and then route. So they are quickly and steadily um, reaching their disorganization type phase. Now. I don't know, I'm guessing you could call that kind of a, not a stalemate, but I would think that they would, oh, that's pretty much it. There is no displacement in this game like there are in some other um, war games of its type. Here, if you can't move, can't do it. I'll go ahead and uh, do this battle now, which looks like a five to a seven. He's in the rough, and in the rough, I think you have to have defenders double in melee, and you subtract one bombardment factor when the defenders are. Um, so we're going to double that. So luckily, the Spanish have been reduced. So the um, the Kazan uh, unit is going to have. 
a strength of five and he'll have his morale which has been reduced a little bit but it's still the same um, four so five and four will be nine and it's going to be nine to seventeen did I say seventeen yes fourteen but he has a morale of one now so nine to sixteen And that looks like that's going to push it clear to the one to four column. So this is not going to be one of the better attacks, but it's pretty much necessary if I want to try to break the Spanish or force them back. All right, we're going to roll a die for the uh, the combat I just indicated. We're going to be on the one to four column. We roll a six, which is actually one of the best things the French could have rolled. It's going to be one morale hit um, for each command. Okay, so that will reduce the Spanish by one more morale point. And let's see, that was Gazan. He'll go down another morale point. So like I said, that was probably the best result that the um, French could have hoped for. Okay, the last attack by the French is going to be this well I don't know if that stands for a long a larger a longer name but right now I'm gonna say I'm gonna pronounce it the best I can on the counter which I'm going with whirl and this goes on uh, versus the Ballesteros unit and yes the person that owned this game before me decided that he would uh, record the various units subunits within each um, I'm not sure if these are, I'm not sure what the scale is exactly. They're not battalions, so they're going to be up uh, one level, I think. Maybe divisions? I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter for now. So we have basically a 24 to 7, which is 3 to 1 odds rounded down. So we're going to be rolling on the 3 to 1 table. Okay, the die roll on the 3 to 1 is a 3. What do we got over here? Sorry, I'm holding the camera. Uh, three to one to three. It looks like the French are going to take two morale hits and the Spanish will be taking three additional morale hits. Uh, I'm not so sure that I can't pick who takes the morale hits in a battle with multiple commands, but I need to double check that. So, Spanish, two, three, and uh, let's just go ahead and keep taking hits with Kazan, I guess. Uh, one, two. So that wraps up. I know you didn't see that. I'm sorry about that. But I moved his on to spaces to the right. Um, anyway, that wraps up the combat phase for the French. I don't know that I'm going to go ahead and resolve the rest of the game turn out. Um, I might make it through part of the... Well, there's nothing to do with regroup. Because you have to be three hexes away. All units of that command have to be three hexes away from an enemy unit in order to regroup morale for that command. The only thing coming, the only thing important about this turn would be that Cole's command is coming in and historically he arrived, went to, uh, oh, sorry, went to the left of the screen to bolster the flagging Spanish and held off uh, held off the French part of Stuart also went that way Stuart's command uh, historically but right now they're gonna be tied up on this side or historically they also sent a couple of units to the uh, left hand side so anyway you've got a basic idea of how the game plays and stuff it's not bad the rules could use some work on them but um, I think somewhere in here it's a salvageable game. The era and age of the game has something to do with uh, the roughness of the game and the game systems. Um, some polishing up, a little better or more detailed order of battle perhaps. Um, I think it could be a, a fairly decent game in the quad, uh, in the old SBI quad-like series. But, I don't know, if you can pick it up cheap, you know, it has some interesting articles in the magazine. 
Um, I was reading through it a little while ago, and I think the Victoria rules, which um, changed and modified the Albuera rules a little bit, wouldn't be that bad if you uh, could assimilate them properly. But um, I don't know. For a two-pack game this old, you know, it might be good for collecting. might be good to try to learn it and play it, but there's so much else out there that I don't think I would uh, waste a whole lot of time, <clears throat> like I have, messing with it. So, anyway, I'm going to move on to some other stuff. I have, what do I have laying around still? Oh, uh, let's see. Wake Island and Morgan's Rifles. Those are both the Mayfair games. And I also have Battle Cry, the um, part of the combat system, which is down below that, as well as the Iron Cross system. I have SBI's football, I have a new Dresden game, or, well, it's an old Dresden game. Uh, a few things like that, so I'll kind of see what I'm in the mood for and what I have the time for. So, anyway, I hope you all have a good uh, day, and I'll talk to you later.